Hello and welcome. We continue our Learning Layers DevOps webinar series with the first tool presentation, which is the Requirements Bazaar, a continuous innovation platform. We will see how the Requirements Bazaar allows end users and developers to get in contact and use social features in the requirements negotiation process. First, let us quickly see what we have learned so far in the webinar series. We started with the challenges that the Learning Layers project is currently facing. The mobile tools are now ready to be employed together with their rich functionality. That means now we need to tackle scaling to waste number of users at the same time. Yet we want to keep up interest on an overall basis. This is the DevOps use lifecycle model that we have introduced in the previous webinar. As you can see, we start the tools presentations in the webinar with the feedback and develop stages of the lifecycle. You can think of this feedback of being initial ideas coming from end users or later thoughts when the apps are already used in real scenarios. Furthermore, we see input coming from co-design teams. The question is, how do we allow and foster communication between these stakeholder groups? Here we see the situation we are facing. Co-design tells us to talk with the end users. It's often the users in the long tail who come up with fresh ideas and who are motivated by seeing their requests actually being heard. Yet end user ideas seldom reach open source software developers as the existing issue tracking tools for developers are often discouraging for end users. I just want to encourage you to search for the Android bug tracker or the one of the Mozilla Firefox browser to see what we mean. On the other hand, tools that are easy for users like App Store reviews are incomplete for developers. Well, here comes the Requirements Bazaar. Requirements Bazaar is a web-based platform. Since we only need minimal input by users, it is very easy to use for end users. It has social features such as likes and dislikes, as well as comments to enable rich communication between end users and developers. Finally, it has an open API so that feedback forms can be directly integrated into apps. But let's see the requirements bazaar in action. First, we open the application browser. To open, we may first go to the developer homepage of Learning Layers to click the Requirements Bazaar item in the main menu. As you notice, a lock icon on the top left confirms that all communication happening between the Requirements Bazaar and the browser on your computer is encrypted. On the landing page of the web application, you see a short welcome note plus a video on the background of the Requirements Bazaar. On the top right, you see two icons. With the door icon on the right, you may log in with your Layers account. Next to it, there's a bell icon. Later, you will be able to see notifications here. On the left, there is a list of public projects. In Requirements Bazaar, a so-called Project combines multiple components or parts of an application together. We'll open the Requirements Bazaar's own project for now. As you see, the left column now changed and shows the list of components of the Requirements Bazaar project. In this case, we have one component for the publicly available web frontend that we're using right now. And we have another component for the API of the backend. As a best practice, we usually assign a new requirement to the component that is first affected by a new feature request from the end user perspective. For example, if you would like to add an invite people by email option on this web page, we would need to enhance both the web front end for the button and the service in the backend for sending the actual email. But since the user first touches this functionality on the web app, we add it here under the web app component. 
Let's look at this component's requirements now. We therefore select the component on the left and see all its requirements in the center of the screen. As you notice, when we have selected requirements bazaar project, the first component was already preloaded by the app. That's why the content on the screen did not change on this time. When we scroll down, we can discover all requirements. On top of the screen, we can search through them. Let's search for image now, as we're not fully pleased by the current appearance of Requirements Bazaar app. You see, there are already two requirements. One stating that there should be images for every requirement. The other one states that we should be able to change our profile picture that is displayed next to our requirements. Here, we'll press the like button, as we really like this feature request. Well, it does not allow us to perform this action since we're not logged in yet. Let's do that by clicking on the login button on the top right. Now we are redirected to the login page of Layers. After allowing Requirements Bazaar to access our profile information, we are back at the landing page, so let's navigate back to the item. As you can imagine, there is already a requirement demanding getting redirected to the last seen requirement of the login. We may now may like or dislike the requirement. Notice that if you click on the menu icon on the right, you get further options like following the requirement or get to get notified about updates as new likes or comments come in. Now let's see how we may add a new requirement. For example, I would like to have an overview page for projects with some statistics on how many requirements there are. By clicking the plus icon on the right, a very short and simple dialog opens with the essential input fields we need for submitting a requirement. After clicking create, the requirement is being created and appears in the list of this component of this project. In this webinar, we have learned how we as end users can submit new ideas, feature requests or bug reports through the Requirements Bazaar. Thank you for watching. Now, please check out the exercises below and try out the Requirements Bazaar yourself.